So in this video, we're going to be talking about wireless microphones. This is the Mirfac V10 Pro. It's a completely wireless system, meaning that there's no cable going from the microphone to the camera. This version comes with one receiver that sits on top of the camera and two transmitters, this one and one that is in my pocket connected to this microphone that you're listening right now. This kind of microphone is perfect for YouTube tutorials, interviews, but actually how good it performs. So I tested every function it has and you're gonna see all of that right after the intro. <laughs> E aí, I'm Andrew, Brazilian photographer and filmmaker living in Italy and in this channel I help you with the tech tools to be creative. And one of the tools that are amongst the most important ones for you to get right in the beginning are microphones. Audio is probably the most important thing you should consider upgrading right from the start. If you're on a budget and you don't want to spend too much right now, you can check this video over here where I test also Mirfax Lavalier microphone, which is very similar to this one, that costs only $20 and is already going to guarantee you a very, very good audio. The only problem, let's say, with that microphone is that you have to connect it to the camera using a cable. And this solution here totally eliminates having something connecting or limiting you from walking around freely. If you don't know what it is, let me explain to you very briefly. These are wireless microphones. So you have one of these small boxes sitting on top of the camera. It's going to receive signals being transmitted by one of these, the transmitters that are going to be on the person who's talking. You can use directly this as the microphone or you can attach a lavalier microphone like I'm using right now to one of these and just hide it in your pocket, being something much smaller and that it's much more difficult to see on the video. Quick disclaimer, Mirfax sent me these microphones to be tested, but this is not a paid advertisement and I get to do the video as an honest review of what I really think about them. They were only involved during the production of this video because of some doubts that I had about the product and one problem that later on I'm gonna show you. The Pro solution comes with two transmitters, meaning that you can use one or two depending on what you're filming and how many people are in the scene. The catch with wireless microphones that require some testing is that they are prone to interference. Meaning if there's something disturbing the signal, it can be an obstacle properly, a person or a wall or something like that in between the transmitter and the receiver. Or if there's just too much interference using the same frequency that these use, you can end up having some gaps in the audio. This kind of budget wireless microphones use the same frequency as Wi-Fi and many other devices. So it makes it easier to implement, cheaper, but also puts a limit on how far you can trust it. Okay, so let me show you what comes in the box. So opening the box, which is very, very nice and organized, you're gonna find the two transmitters and the receiver, plus some accessories. The receiver itself has a display where you're gonna be able to see all the information, a place to monitor the audio, and also buttons about gain, mute, and to change the frequency. The transmitter has the SD card slot and a switch to turn it on and off. In this other box, you're gonna find some more accessories, such as cables and the lavalier microphones that come already within the package. There are two lavalier microphones, one for each transmitter, which is very, very practical and also the cables to connect to the camera, the receiver to the camera, and also to a smartphone if you intend to use that. These are some dead cats to protect you from the wind, so it doesn't really matter. If it's really windy outside, it is still gonna have good audio. Regarding connection, all of them comes with USB-C ports to charge, and also with this super smart cable that you can use to charge all of them at the same time. But anyway, let's get to the interesting part, which are the tests. So first of all, the most basic test is this here, just a talking head video in which you can see me and I'm quite close to the camera, but still having a proper microphone makes so much difference. If you don't believe me, I'm gonna turn it off for a while and you're gonna listen the internal microphone of the camera. All right, the receiver is here. I'm just using the internal microphone of the camera and now you can see the huge difference it makes. Next up, we have the range test, meaning how far can you go from the camera and the microphone will still work. And here my tip for you is to evaluate any kind of wireless microphone based on the type of filming that you do. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's do it. And I just activated here the recording in the SD card also. So we're going to be able to compare later the waveform from what I record in camera and what I recorded here. So just let's go. All right, so I'm just going to be talking with the microphone to see when it's going to lose connection. Line is still on. Rack. Okay, reach the fence. Looks fine. How did it go? Of microphones that Mirfak just sent me. Let's see. Okay, so I'm just talking here. Bring that I'm always recording also internally in the SD card. I didn't stop in any moment. 
stats. All right, so from the stats, we could see that when you're facing away from the camera, the range is totally different from when you're in line of sight. So my recommendation here is, unless you're filming people on a stage that are turning around and you have to be really far away, or if you're following someone from a distance, then maybe this kind of microphone is not really good for you. But for any other kind of filming that you're gonna keep around five meters distance to whoever's talking, there's gonna be no problem at all. And if by any chance the recording fails for a while, you still have one shot because there are some safety features included in this package that I'm gonna show you right now. So on this side of the transmitter, there's an entrance for an SD card up to 64 gigabytes and a switch for you to record internally. This means that if the switch is set to rec, it's gonna be recording on your camera, but also internally here. So later on, if the transmission had any trouble and you see that there's a gap in the audio while you're editing, you can just grab the same audio file from here and replace it and you won't have any kind of gap. So if it is possible to retake the shot and make it right from the start, I totally advise you to do so. But anyway, if something goes wrong, at least you have something to save you. Let me show you an example. You're gonna be seeing the waveform of the range test you saw before. Microphones that Mirfak just sent me. Let's see. Okay, so I'm just talking here and I have no idea how many steps yet, but I'm gonna be able to count it later. And remember those gaps. On the right, you can see the audio that was recorded internally, meaning that there was no gap at all. So if I was really talking something that was important, I could just replace this audio in the editing software from the one that I got from the SD card. Hi, it's me, the editor again. I'm sorry to interrupt once more, but I have just something very quick to say. Now, what I said about replacing the audio with the one that comes from the SD card and the transmitter, it is true. This is gonna be a much more complete audio than the one from the receiver and the camera if you had some sort of disconnection. But while editing this video, I noticed a problem, which is the audio becoming a little bit out of sync if you have something a little bit longer than a minute. And researching, I found out the reason. The recording from the camera has the audio at 48 kilohertz, and the one that comes from the SD card is at 44.1, meaning that it's a little bit slower. So the longer the clip, the more it's gonna drift out of sync by the end. You can try to convert, you can try to speed it up a little bit, but it's one more step that you're gonna have to take to make it perfect in the editing. That's all, back to you. Now on the side of the transmitter, you're gonna see the jack for you to insert one of the lavalier microphones. The power button and three LEDs. One is gonna tell you if it's charging, one if it's connected to the receiver, and another one to tell you if you're actually recording internally also. And on the other side, you got the switch to record internally, the SD card and the USB-C port. The microphone stays on top and you have this nice clip to put it on someone's clothes. And on the side of the receiver, you're gonna find the gain control that is gonna range from minus 18 to plus six dB, a frequency shifter for you to try to avoid some kinds of noises, and a mute button that is like, kind of obvious what it does. So gain is the way to boost your audio to the right level. And there are many places in the chain of recording until editing that you can do it, but the quality is gonna be definitely different. The first way to change the level of the audio is getting it closer to the mouth or a little bit farther away from it. So after you found a comfortable spot, you can set the gain in the microphone, on the camera, or you can also boost it in post-production. So first of all, position the mic correctly, and second, try to use more the amplifier from the microphone than the one from the camera, that usually is not as good. So let's just make a quick comparison here. So this microphone has different levels of range that goes from minus 18 to plus 6 dB. And what you're listening right now is the 0 dB on the Mirfak microphone and plus 5 on the a7 III. And now you're listening plus 3 dB on the Mirfak microphone and only plus 2 on the a7 III. And in this test I have minus 18 on the Mirfak microphone and plus 17 on the a7 III. Okay, so now an important part, what about the price? The Wii 10 with one transmitter comes at $120 and the Wii 10 Pro with two transmitters at $200, but there are some discounts occasionally. But consider that not many solutions out there come with the lavalier microphones that are gonna cost, if you get a cheaper one, about $20. Now this mechanism of having the switch for you to record internally, in my point of view, has a good and a bad side. The bad one is that a couple of times I forgot to switch it on and a couple of times I forgot to switch it off. So either I didn't record internally or I just kept recording forever. But the good one is that then you don't even need the receiver or a camera to record something if you need. It becomes a totally run and gun style of microphone. And there is absolutely no chance that the connection to the receiver being lost is going to interfere with the internal recording at all. All right, so after all, what's the conclusion of all these tests? First of all, let's talk about ease of use, and these are very straightforward. I had one issue that I couldn't find the answer in the website about the formatting of the SD cards for the internal recording. My SD cards were formatted as NTFS, and it just wasn't working at all. 
When I changed them to FAT32, then there was no problem. Apart from that, all you need to do is charge them when you need, so it's very easy. What about build quality? Well, the box, the components and the presentation really impressed me actually. The transmitter and the receiver, they do feel a little bit plastic, but they feel solid at the same time. It's not something that is going to break on your hands. What about quality, considering what's promised? Regarding audio quality itself, you heard this microphone throughout this whole video. Different microphones are going to respond better to different frequencies and to different tones of voices. But in my opinion, it sounded very good thinking about how small it is and how practical also it is to use. What about cost benefit? Well, this definitely costs much more than a simple lavalier microphone that is already going to grant you a very good audio for your videos. Lavalier and shotgun mics are very limiting in the sense that you're going to have to keep a distance to the camera because of the cable or because if you go too far from the microphone, it doesn't get you at all. This one grants you total freedom because the microphone is going to be the same distance from your mouth the whole time. So you can record at home, outside, it doesn't really matter and you don't have to worry at all about the cables. So overall, should you ignore it, consider it or get it right now? So I think all in all, this is a very well balanced solution if you have to be some meters away from the camera and if you need some mobility. Now, if you're only looking for audio quality, there are many other solutions that are going to have a better response to your voice, but they are also going to cost way, way more. Quick opinion here from the editing station, and this does not apply only to Mirfak microphones, but also to any kind of wireless microphone. You're always going to get the best results if you pair it with a lav mic that is going to be fixed in a place and won't be rubbing against your clothes. And also if you're not too far away from the camera and turning around. If you do it once in a while, it's not a problem. You just get it from the SD card, from the internal memory, you replace it in the editing software and it's going to be fine. But if a high percentage of what you do is people very far away from the camera and turning around, you're going to be better off with a proprietary radio frequency solution that you can trust for this kind of situations. As it counts for any kind of piece of tech, you have to get what's the best cost benefit for what you do. All right, that's it for my part. Back to you. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see the comparison of this product with some others that I have on the channel, just take a look in the card over here or in the video that is going to be recommended right after this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. Wow, you made it to the end screen. Thank you so much for watching this whole video. And now you can just click here or maybe the, I'm not really sure which side it is, but anyways, you're gonna find it here on the screen, what YouTube thinks is the best video for you based on your preferences. So probably it's something interesting, I hope. And maybe it's even something related to this video, which is even better, but I can't tell. I just hope it's good for you. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.